Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. I love every part of doing this. I hesitate calling this a job because by definition, a job is a paid position of regular employment. There's nothing regular or even logical about what I do on a daily basis. You see, I, like many of you out there, was lied to by teachers and grown-ups when I was little. They said I was wasting my time playing video games and watching movies. No, instead, I was told that playing the recorder, memorizing the periodic table, mastering long division, and writing in cursive would be my path to success in life. Luckily, I was a horrible student and I never listened to anything teachers told me, and so by the time I graduated, the recession hit. The last recession, which didn't nearly affect me as much as you'd think because I wasn't going to get a good job anyway, and also uh, pizza delivery, which is what I was involved in, is a recession-proof industry. Anyway, the best part of being a YouTuber is actually the research and writing, in my opinion. Now, a lot of you might be surprised that I say that because you question whether I do any research at all and whether I'm making all of this up. The second part of my job is basically just recording, which is what I'm doing right now. And I kind of hate this part. You see, after my pizza logistical services career ended, I started working in video production and developed a real taste for being behind the camera. In my opinion, it's actually a lot more interesting being behind the camera than being some kind of sock puppet in front of it. Just ask all those starlets at Miramax. The amount of superficial work that a talent needs to do to their appearance to meet some kind of made up standard is ridiculous, especially after 4K was introduced. It can take hours and many layers of foundation to make their faces look the way they do, and if you actually see them in person with all that makeup on, it's terrifying. And it's not just the ladies, dudes have to do it as well, lipstick and everything. Now you guys might be thinking to yourselves, well Alan, why does it look like you've put no effort into your own appearance? You have a wound on your face and it looks like you've been wearing the same bathrobe on Generation Tech for about five weeks now. To which I respond, true, but did you know I got this wound on my face from an old woman in the grocery store? We were fighting over toilet paper or something. Also, did you know that because I'm only wearing bathrobes every day now during this lockdown, I've saved tons of money on electricity, water, and detergent. I'm actually helping out. What are we talking about? Ah yes, so being recorded is my least favorite thing. It's tiring, sometimes my tongue gets tired and I start slurring words or I pick up a weird accent or I forget where I am and I start flinging anti-dolphin propaganda. Now a lot of you might be thinking, well Alan, why don't you just hide your face like a lot of the other YouTube channels do and just kind of narrate over footage the whole time? Well, I believe if you're going to say crazy stuff on the internet, you should have enough courage at least to show your face when you're doing it. That way the audience knows you're not some kind of weirdo who likes to wear other people's skin. It's all about authenticity and being comfortable wearing your own skin. Now in the last few decades there have been some massive advancements in technology, digital technology, that might make YouTube hosts a thing of the past. And that might be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you are. You guys remember when Lord of the Rings came out and there was all this buzz about Andy Serkis running around in a motion capping suit and how that was digitally transformed into the character Golem? Well, that film came out in 2001 and it took a massive team of engineers at Weta Digital to pull it off. It's the same motion capping technology that's used in a lot of video game studios to capture realistic human motion or even portray actors realistically in cutscenes. Almost 20 years later now, that motion capping technology can fit in the palm of our hands in a smartphone. By using this camera and certain apps, we can basically motion cap our faces and put, you know, beards and hats and funny animal faces on our face. It, it's pretty remarkable that it can all fit in this small device. Then there's the Adobe editing suite that we use for YouTube. It also has a character animation function which allows you to not only motion capture yourself, but you can also rig an animated character to your movements. Again, these are things that used to cost millions and millions of dollars to do, but thanks to advancements in computer processing technology and software, well, it's pretty easy to do at home all by yourself without any engineers or any help. It's one of the main reasons why I stopped being interested in video production. Every specialization I learned, like how to operate a Steadicam for instance, became obsolete because of new technology like the gimbals. It literally takes years to master the Steadicam and a lot of physical training. These are extremely heavy pieces of equipment that you have to balance on your body, but with a gimbal, you can basically stabilize all your shots with just about 10 minutes of instruction. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this as a lot of industries are starting to feel the slow or fast creep of automation 
take over. Especially now that people can't even go out and touch each other, the idea of a robot workforce is becoming more and more talked about because they can't get infected. I mean, guys, think about it. A lot of you have been watching me since before the Wuhan incident actually happened. You have no idea where I've been. I could have been running around Asia licking bats and deep frying pangolin. Penguin look like Earth Pokemons, but that only makes me want to eat them more. I fully embrace the Chinese side of my heritage. I mean, like a lot of cultures that have a history of famine, Chinese people don't have these complicated views on animals like people in the Western world do. We don't try to humanize animals and give them human feelings and emotions. When we see an animal, we either kill them because they're dangerous or we kill them because they're food. No, but seriously, I enjoy trying to eat everything I can. I'm food curious and I'm very open about it. But I haven't been tested for this whole Wuhan thing, so you, the viewers, should be kind of worried about it. Because there's very limited information on whether this thing can spread through the internet. Is Windows Defender enough to stop it from spreading to your computer, or do you need some kind of third-party software like Norton or McAfee to keep yourself safe? I've actually heard that there are shortages in advanced antiviral software, and that unless you're an essential worker, you probably should just rely on homemade remedies like using a guest profile without admin privileges. But then I also heard rumors that Mac systems actually have a lower infection rate because their OS is not compatible with the Wuhan thing at the subatomic level. But then I heard another rumor about how that study was off because Mac users frequently restart their computers and that has a positive effect on preventing the spread of the virus. I obviously don't science well, and I definitely am not smart enough to pour through all the research papers on the subject right now. So I, like many of you out there, feel very misinformed and basically I'm stuck at home hoarding Steam games because I'm afraid that the video game industry will run out of video games. But what if instead of filming myself on camera every day, we could just generate some kind of AI avatar which would prevent the risk of anything from me spreading to you through your computer? I mean. I'm not even talking about like a cartoon avatar, I'm talking about like a real looking live action host. That just isn't me. See, in late 2018, Chinese state-run media showed off an AI-generated news host based off of one of their existing lackeys. The results aren't perfect, of course. Notice the weird movements around the mouth. It's not just because he's speaking Mandarin, but it's because our mouths are very complicated and when we talk, there are tons of different muscles all over our face that kind of work in unison to create these sounds. And it's something that's very easy for us to pick up on because we spend a lot of time staring at other people's mouths when they're talking to us. Well, at least we used to before this Wuhan thing. The voice is also computer generated and honestly, it's only a few generations updated from Stephen Hawking's voice. We even had a company contact generation tech that provided services in which they would translate every one of my videos into Spanish using AI software and then using an AI generated voice, basically dub everything I said in Spanish as well. To which I responded, no necesito, mi espanol es muy bien, puta maracón. But just like how motion capping technology went from something only a giant studio could do to something we could all do on our cell phones, I feel like this is just the beginning of the AI host and all the technology surrounding it. But the question is, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Now obviously there's that whole uncanny valley thing. Humans tend to accept stylized uh, renditions of humans like cartoons and animations pretty well, but when it comes to hyper-realistic digital renderings of human beings, it, it kind of makes us feel uneasy. We'll have Tarkin looks a lot more realistic than in Homer Simpson, but there's something off about his appearance. And it only happens when he's in motion. If you freeze this image, it's an uncanny rendering of Peter Cushing's face. But the second he moves, his face just doesn't ripple and move the way it should. But then again, had not a lot of fuss been made about this in the media before the movie came out, a lot of you probably would have missed it. For instance, Steven Stevenson, head of digital sculpting for Rogue One, said nothing because Steve Stevenson is obviously a made up name that I gave to this AI generated picture of a human being, which is just one of 100,000 fake AI made pictures. It's basically impossible to determine whether these pictures are real or not. Which brings me to the real point of this video. Am I an AI? Could this just all be AI generated CGI, could all this be fake? I mean, we, we really don't know, right? I mean, this is exactly the type of content that an AI, a smart AI would do to throw off humans, right? By exposing all the flaws in AI, you would expect that only a human would do such a thing. Or maybe I used to be real, but somewhere along the lines, we switched out the real Alan from Avatar. Maybe because Alan lost the top of his skull thanks to a headcrab incident. 
The point is, within a few decades, it might be impossible to tell the difference anymore. I mean, right now we have photos that look super realistic. Maybe they'll figure out the uh, whole CGI in films within the next few years, and then sooner or later, we're gonna have AI robots that are walking around uh, in the streets that look just like humans. Or maybe we're all just in a simulation, which is why I always like to remind you that my name is Alan, and life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.